Hi, this is Sergio with GJD 3D and uh, I have another video for you. In this one, uh, the previous uh, video that I showed you relating to glass ring made the head. Now I'm going to show you the video that makes the shank. So uh, I have the head here already done, the previous one that I already did. So let's put that away for now. Let me hide the head, the logos, and the gemstone. There we go. And I have this line that has half is half the edge of the stone so right now let me load up the definition uh, here's grasshopper and i'm going to open a recent file because i just had it here let me open it and here's the definition as it opens and here it's already uh, starting to do its uh, things. Notice that uh, it's asking here in orange. It wants to know the 2D curve to be to be used. So uh, let's set that right away. So set one geometry and pick that curve. And immediately it will, whatever settings are applied, it will create the, the, the basic shape of the shank based on those parameters. Now notice that we can come over here and decide uh, quite a few things. Notice that the ring right now is a conic shape. So it's thin down here and large on the top here. So depending on the style of ring you want to make, uh, if you're making a, a women's ring, so probably you want the tapering. If you want a men's ring, you might want the straight taper, the straight uh, side. So we can come over here to the side of the ring and make it line. So now we get the straight uh, edge rather than the conic and this is the one that i'm going to configure uh, here so right now notice that we can select the ring size right now it says to size nine i can scroll up and down uh, you also have you know the edge thickness this edge here right now it says to one millimeter uh, notice that we can make that as big or as small as we want i'm going to make that 1.5 there we go and notice that we can make the offset, how far, if we look at it sideways, you can actually see what's happening there. How far is taking it towards the outside, the tapering angle. So uh, I think there are 1.25, might look good. 1.25, enter. There we go. So notice that that makes it all the way around. Nice little tapered edge there. Now we can go over and uh, move a little lower here. Notice that we have settings to control everything here. Now uh, you can define the thickness uh, of, the, of the rings also, and also the arcs. Like for example, the bottom arc right now, I think is way too rounded. You know, I don't want the ring to be so rounded down there right now. So, uh, so the arc on the bottom, I'm gonna lower it down, 2.5 there, very smooth almost. Now looking at the ring from the side, I can see that this is like coming inside. It's not really working. So I need to work, you know, on the arc in the center. And I'm gonna bring that out until I get a nice flowing of the shape of the ring. And that's starting to look good right about now. Look at right there, nice and smooth. Now let's look at this in the top view there we go see that's very nice so it looks like probably three will be a good choice here so three there you know now let me go back into perspective and there's our shape being formed there we go so we can configure this as we want now look at what we have over here also all the way on the bottom Notice that I'm displaying the full ring right now, but you know, I could just tell it to show me just half of it because it's symmetrical in this case, you know, but you know, I'll just leave it full ring, you know, do the full thing in one shot. Now notice that here it says do not unroll, but what happens if I tell it to unroll the ring? Uh-huh, now I have, and I can actually move it farther away on the Y, there we go. What that is doing is giving me these surfaces flat on the floor for me to work with later as I start doing the shields that are gonna go on the side of this ring. So at this point, I can go ahead and 
go up to the top and I'm going to go ahead and tell it I want to bake the wireframe and I'm going to place that in maybe in the guides maybe and I also want to bake all the ring into the shack layer and uh, I want to bake the unroll surface and I'll put that anywhere really in this case I'm just going to throw it into the vessel there you know so right now I have the whole wireframe of the ring the actual surfaces and this parts over here now you might be wondering why it doesn't have this surface here the reason why is that we do not have network surface capability in Grasshopper and we're going to build that surface using a network uh, but you know uh, Grasshopper has given us all the curves that we need to do that so with that in mind let me close the definition don't want to save anything there we go and minimize grasshopper over here now here I have taken the the curves that resulted and I did some trimming uh, to simplify and only work half of the ring so I am going to now hide the surfaces that are on the way there so I'm gonna the shank layer I'll turn that off that turns off all the existing surfaces uh, I can take this curve away from here notice what I have here this is basically if you look at this this is the side of the ring and it's also this shape here the head will go right there in the middle and then this shape fits right in here so I'm going to go ahead and uh, make that into a surface so network there is my uh, option there and uh, here are my tolerance 001 I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and there's my surface for the side of the ring I can uh, now turn off the curves there we go take this guy here and I can then uh, use mirror on that but before I do that I'm gonna work on it just by itself here so notice that now I can draw on here from the top view any design that I want so in this case I could bring in a logo or anything place it in here so for example if I duplicate the edges right here and I have this curve here and then maybe I can put this uh, maybe an arc over here use a snap to the grid here here and right there and then I can maybe hide this surface here and trim away actually let me put a line straight line from here to there and I'm going to mirror that so I'm going to use midpoint there we go uh, on here and mirror that over to the bottom there now I can go ahead and trim And delete all this then I need to take all of this and join and probably something I didn't do before I should do now is I should offset this in by just a little bit maybe 0.25 and delete that because I don't want to I don't want it to be exactly the same size as the edge of the ring then we're gonna have boolean issues later so here's my here's this part here and I can do anything 
I want in there. Uh, could be a logo, could be numbers, could be lettering. Uh, okay, now using the developed surface on the floor, notice I have trimmed it and created a new network surface based on the edges of that shape. So that represents exactly this, this shape. Now I'm going to take this solid and the small little block inside the zero. And I am going to use transform flow along surface. Pick right here and pick right here. There we go. Now let's, let me get rid of this from here. And now at this point, uh, if I bring back, uh, if I take this, and then you do a rotation. I'm going to rotate from zero uh, with copy 180. Enter. I have the two sides of the ring. I can now bring back the head. Actually, let's not bring back the head yet. Let's bring back the shank. And as you can see, there's all of, all of these things here. You can select this here, join. There. And now uh, I can use, I can do a Boolean difference. From this, let's take this away. And there's the ring, uh, the 2011 logo cut out into the size of the. Change this to. And there we have our shank with, with our logo.